few months after I met Amelia, um, I went to California. I rented a piano and put it in the flat here so she could play. And uh, when I came back, she walked up the steps to the flat, and I didn't even recognize her. Uh, she, you know, she, she like a totally different woman. I said, "What is wrong?" She said that the Germans uh, had told her she had to leave, and uh, she was not happy. And so I said, "Okay, well, I'll take the camera." And um, I'll videotape you playing every piano we come across in Croatia and Bosnia. And uh, we'll look for a site for the unborn soldier. And when we left here, uh, I picked her up in the cab and she didn't open her eyes until we got to the airport. Uh, we got to the airport and the police took her aside. And, uh, while we were getting onto the plane, when I waited at the plane, they said, you have to board Mr. Darling. I said, I'm not leaving without her. You know, and just before the plane took off, we both got on. She didn't open her eyes the whole trip. She didn't open her eyes until she got to Croatia. And she didn't smile until we got into the coffee shop and she started, you know, hearing her language. <laughs> and um, so, we went to her house and split. Uh, everything was gone. Everything had been stolen, but at least the house was still standing. Uh, we stayed there for a few days, and then we went to the island of Havar, uh, where she also had a house. But after she left because of the war, the chief of police in the village moved into the house and uh, is still there. Then we went to Mostar after Havar, and this was where she was born. We went to the house where her mother was born, she was born, and her daughter was born. And it was like a fairy tale castle surrounded by a jungle, uh, totally destroyed. So she lost everything. Uh, when we traveled around, we saw a lot of destruction. And some of these uh, were villages that over time the buildings had just sort of collapsed in on themselves. Then there were the houses that had been destroyed by bombs. And the difference between the destruction from time and the destruction that happens like this in a bombing is, is uh, it's a subtle difference that uh, erodes over time. When time destroys the building, uh, the people are also destroyed by time. They come and they go in the different generations. Um, her house in Mostar, uh, generations, three, four generations have lived there. But when you look in the window, there's no sense of the passing of the time. There's the loss of the moment, the absolute destruction of war that stopped the generations from going on. This is the, you know, the pain.
and I was uh, at the time working on this piece of sculpture called the Unborn Soldier, and um, I was looking for a site to put it uh, in Bosnia or Croatia. And during the war there, my nephew, Adam, had been uh, working on a mission for Clinton to uh, bring economics, uh, you know, uh, stability and beef up the uh, infrastructure of the government there and bring in technology. And this was during the war, and so it was sort of like a, a business mission to replace war with economics. Anyway, he was working for the Commerce Department, and um, the plane crashed in Dubrovnik on the way to Bosnia, and they all died. Former Commerce Secretary and 34 others died in 1996 while on a trade mission to the former Yugoslavia when their Air Force plane crashed into a mountain near the Croatian city of Dubrovnik. So, um, I was telling Amela this story, and um, she said uh, she was from Croatia and Bosnia and could help me find a site. And she was uh, sort of touched by the fact that I wanted to do it there. So, anyway, we decided that it would be good to put one unborn soldier, uh, you know, have a stone made for each nation in the United Nations, 196 stones. And we would place them all in a large circle, and they would have written on each one, carved into each piece of marble, uh, the word unborn soldier in each language of the United Nations. And we'd put a concert grand piano in the center of the circle, and the mellow would play uh, the music uh, that she would write, compose for uh, the unborn soldier. suppose that if the unborn soldier has any story it's a, uh, or meaning, it's, it's a, um, we have to solve our problems in our own time, you know, as all the wars being fought now are being fought over arguments that began before any of us were born, you know, and um, that in order for the world to remain healthy, it's like a human body, you know, the blood has to move freely. You get a blood clot here, 
you know, can stop the blood going and you can die, you know. Uh, and I feel the same way with the earth. I mean, we're the blood. And when the blood clots at a border, you know, it creates a, a, a physical problem, you know, for the whole planet, you know. And uh, it doesn't seem to be getting any better. You didn't know what's going on even, but what, what is the thing who, with who you have to fight? But this seems like we with your uh, friend who was with you on the moment and started to, uh, to, to turn and, and it, it's, it's, it's no, no more your friend, it's, it's totally some strange person. It's like this, it's like you're going crazy and you had to decide it what you have to do, but actually it's a f just try to survive and protect your family. It was a lot of confusing in, in, in this world, it's what's not clean words, really d d dirty. I told a person one time, and I was in France, oh, we're getting so intelligent. I says, we're a bunch of bloody idiots because we've been killing each other since the beginning of time, and we haven't got, got it down yet to know that it doesn't work. Killing everyone. We're still killing everybody. It doesn't work. Shit is proven. After 4,000 years, what have we proven? All we've done now is we make better guns and better equipment to kill more people, easier. But the same thing. I find it very disgusting. It's unbelievable to me. I'm just glad I could get away from their idiocy. The whole thing is even an invasion of another country can be avoided, you know, by not wanting what they have. Simple. Yeah. Let them live and, and deal with them on a uh, economy basis instead of killing. Yeah. They don't want to do that. Yeah. The arms forces is making all the damn money. My God. Now, if you were in America and you're making arms, you're the richest man in America. All those companies that make guns, bulletproof vests, this, that, they're making a fortune on our tax dollar. Yeah. And it, what did we solve? Nothing. It never will. Yeah. And if we don't stop this, another thousand years we'll still be doing the same thing. More effectively.
before he had the black hair and next next <laughs> day uh, yeah he was totally white this it's happened to him really it's it's strange because uh, it was too much for him on some way but for for all this i mean really this all these guys are such a Good people, it's totally normal people who just try and protect the family and, and, and protect uh, own life. And that's all, and took all this really heavy experience. And that's why this, this, this uh, music, you know, that was not music, that was like uh, crying and going crazy. It's, it's extremely, because uh, the silent was. Uh, something what puts you down. And then, I don't know, in some way, uh, through this uh, sound of piano, maybe a sound of natural instrument, even this. Nobody play instrument. Maybe because of the sound of really real instrument come some other feeling through, yeah, yeah. Because really, I can also imagine you have to 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 be like a stone uh, to stay there and fight and see all these things and take this experience and really uh, trying to be stone and and feel anything just to protect you to don't go crazy because a lot of river people is going crazy. She told me about her professor, and uh, Mella hadn't heard him, of, you know, from him in several years. We, when we got to Mostar, we started asking around for him because nobody'd seen him, 
and uh, they said, we think he just, you know, had vanished. And during the war, he'd been taken by soldiers out to the country to be shot. And so they took him uh, out uh, and uh, into the forest, and the soldiers were all there with their guns. And one of the guys who was supposed to shoot him, you know, part of the firing squad, um, uh, said, I can't shoot, we can't shoot him. He taught me how to play piano. You know, this is a professor. I said, oh, the professor, okay. So, they, but they said, um, we won't shoot you, but don't go back to Mostar. So the professor, he walked all night back to Mostar, and he um, uh, hooked up batteries and uh, whatever, rewired his house, so the electricity came to his doorknob. So if they came back for him, you know, they would fry before yeah. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Why would they want to shoot him? Just because he's... Because he's Muslim. Muslim, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. same flat he was in, and um, Amela was the only person allowed in, and she would tell me about it. And then one night, um, we were sitting at this uh, uh, taverna, you know, and uh, he had enough to drink. He decided we could, I could go too. Oh, 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 okay. Amel, playing piano. Thank you. 
this right here. I go what Nijawa's here to.